So Depth Anything V3 just came out and allows you to do 3D reconstruction with single images or multi-images. What's nice about this new model is that it allows you to do video reconstruction, slam for large scale scenes, feed forward 3D Gaussian estimation, and also spatial perception from multi-cameras. If you're new here, my name is Kevin and I've been doing robotics and AI for 10 plus years and have lots of resources on my channel. I also have a master's robotics and AI bundle as well as the robotics project bundle. Go ahead and check it out at kevinwoodrobotics.com. So the key feature of Depth Anything V3 is that it uses a single transformer vanilla dyno architecture here. So it's a very simple model compared with a lot of the other complex, you know, SLAM and 3D reconstruction models. And it also has this ray component that comes out of the dual DPT head combined with the depth output and together you get a 3D point cloud. So this is really what stands out about this model. It's pretty small and lightweight and good for some real-time applications. So you can see here, this is some of the comparison of the teacher label supervision. So up here on the, on the top is the image. The middle is without the teacher and the bottom is with the teacher. And what you notice is the level of detail in some of these areas like the tree here, the bird, you can see the clear separation between the foreground and background. So these are some really nice results. You can also see right here, this is some more examples with and without the DA3 teacher. So you can see in the middle column with the DA3 teacher, you can look at the details of the chair here compared with the right and left side. Also some of the details of the lamps, you can see each individual post of the lamp compared with the left. So these are pretty nice results. And here's yet another one. You can see the details that we see here. In the middle, you can see the leaves more clearly. Also down here, again, some of the leaf structure. And here you can also see there's some more clear separation between the foreground and background. Right here is another example comparing the post estimation quality. You can see right here, my head's kind of blocking, but I move you can see that the ground truth is basically a straight line and their results here is a straight line as well but if you compare with the VGGT and the Pi 3 you can see that the lines are kind of all over the place same thing with the top the first two the lines are kind of scrambled up and uh, their model and compared with the ground truth is a nice linear line. So these are the basically the post path or the camera path that we're seeing. And you can see it does a pretty good job estimating the poses. Another thing too that I'd like to point out is that some of these results don't require many images to do the 3D reconstruction. Like for this example, this is a great wall uh, 3D reconstruction, which only used 13 images. And this right here is a Colosseum using only two images. So with very few images, it's able to get quite impressive results. But let's go ahead and take a look at some more interactive demos. So this is the first one that we were looking at at the very beginning of the video. And what we see here, these rainbow colors, is this uh, camera path that it took to travel. And you can see it's really good at novel view synthesis. So looking at this in different views, we're able to get a pretty... Uh, equal size to scale. You know, sometimes some things that are 3D constructed tend to be compressed, but you can see that uh, the shape tends to retain what we expect this um, Colosseum to look like. And notice that some of the details here, even on the side, it tend to do pretty well, which is pretty impressive. You can see the sizes of these uh, windows here is very consistent throughout. So that's one thing that I look for is the consistency and any sort of warping that happens at the ends, which this model doesn't tend to do too much. And another thing too is the flatness. So if we take a look at this view, you can see that I would say overall the floor is pretty flat. There is some slight curvature that you can see in uh, some of the areas, but overall I would say this is you know, pretty good results in terms of the overall consistency and the realisticness of the geometries that we see here. You could see a little bit of warping in this area, but I would say it's most likely because this is going in a linear path. If it were to do more of a 360 travel, it might have gotten better results in this particular area. So let's take a look at some indoor scenes. So this is a very basic example of a room. You can see the colors. This is where the camera travels. So it kind of sweeps all over the room here. 
And if we take a look, you can see this actually did a quite a good job. Again, I checked for the flatness of the floor since that's something previous models struggled with. It seems to make the room pretty rectangular. The results are pretty good here. And you can even see the monitors here. Everything seems to be very realistic. I don't see any main issues with this render here. Um, but of course, some of the you can see some of the parts of the chair is disappearing and that's mostly due to the angle. I think most of the sweep of this camera based on looking at this is the square part is the, the direction it's looking at. But I think most of the view tends to be looking forward and not so much down. So with a little bit of more data, you could probably collect some of the chair part. But overall, you can see the shape and the walls, everything is perpendicular. So there's not too much distortion going on. The only thing is it's missing some parts due to lack of more views. Here's another example of a burger bar. What you want to notice is that this one only actually uses one image. So this is the blue here on the left. So with a single image, it was able to get a pretty nice 3D reconstruction of the entire scene. You can see that the burger has the 3D-ness to it. You can see how it's popping out. So just with one image, one image, this is very impressive. You could definitely tell that these things here are 3D. Now if we check a little bit over here, I'm just going to drag it over. You can see that, oh yeah, you can see right here in the back, it could definitely pick up some of the height of these items here. So. Overall, this is a very good model. Um, it's interesting that it, they were able to, you know, connect the 3D aspect to it because previously the depth enemy models was only focused on the depth map. But basically, they integrated everything for some of the real use cases how people may want to use it. So there's a lot more examples here. You could go ahead and look through them. Um, this, you're going to find it on their Depth Anything V3 gallery. So go ahead and check it out. They also have a GitHub repo. Just go ahead and Google Depth Anything V3 GitHub and you should be able to find it. So go ahead and check it out. The code is very simple. You can see with a few lines of code, you're able to get this up and running. So yeah, go ahead and check it out and see how it works for your application.